STEM education doesn't exist in a vacuum. STEM-related topics like climate or medical advances affect everyone. So STEM educators need to listen to and collaborate with other societal actors. Some of these are the industry partners who can and want to contribute to STEM education. Some of these are part of the Scientix STEM Alliance. And to tell us more about it, we have Luigi Prisco from European SchoolNet. So Luigi, what is the Scientix STEM Alliance? So again, uh, think of it like that. Uh, there are countless of industry out there that have uh, resources, knowledge, expertise, and most importantly, uh, a commitment to support teachers and STEM education. Um, what they often like is a comprehensive uh, framework to collaborate and to operate in, and that's where we come in. Uh, the STEM Alliance, as the name gives away, uh, brings together industry leaders, policymakers, um, STEM enthusiasts to advance STEM education and promote STEM careers among the young students. So what do these industry partners bring to education or to, to teachers? So the STEM Alliance partners, they have a very and diverse offer of resources. It can go from uh, uh, online professional development uh, sessions where um, experts and professionals engage with educators and provide uh, information and uh, knowledge uh, to ready-made lesson plans that teachers can bring into the classroom. And add on that the career profiles, which are uh, resources that help teachers to introduce into the classroom uh, the topic of skills uh, of the future and job opportunities to prepare the um, future citizen. So you mentioned career profiles. What do they look like and how are they useful for teachers? So the career profiles are made of uh, career sheets and interviews or podcasts to these STEM professionals. We ask them like what is their background, what did they study, what inspired them and how their day-to-day -day job look like with the objective of inspiring the young uh, students, young European students, to pursue these careers that are very important. That's an ex excellent initiative. Now, what if a company doesn't have materials already or, or anything prepared for STEM education? Well, um, they can come to us uh, and we will uh, see how to uh, help them contribute in STEM education. Thank you very much. Last month, we gave you an overview of the priorities set by our ministries of education. Let's dig a bit deeper. The first priority we mentioned was to make STEM teaching better. But how do we do that? Let me give you an example. The resources section of the Scientix platform features thousands of, well, resources uh, for educators and all other people involved in education. Many of these resources are about making STEM subjects more relevant to students. By allowing them to see the connections between these subjects, we actually make sure that students connect what they're learning to the real world. There are materials ready to be used by teachers in the classrooms, there are guidelines for schools and resources for actors in the community. For example, the Carbon Act project offers a classroom resource called Facts and Myths on Climate. In here, students will learn how to verify climate-related information they find online. The Cool Schools project published a guideline which shows schools how to transform their schoolyards into green space for the benefit both of the students and the wider community. The STEAM Learning Ecologies project made available its portfolio. In here, you can find stories on the ground of teachers and organizations who partnered up to create uh, integrated STEM-based projects for their students. For example, you can discover how a museum in Spain and an innovation center partnered up to help students create their own AI video. In this video, students had to show the world they imagined they live in in 2030. You can filter and search for these resources under the link included in the description. Then let us know in the comments which are your favorite resources in the Scientix repository. Scientix mission is to improve STEM teaching from early childhood to secondary education. One of the ways of doing this is by boosting the teacher's confidence in using 
innovative teaching practices, and for schools to be recognized for their expertise on STEM topics. The STEM School Label, as an initiative of Scientix, aims to provide schools with the necessary tools to develop an appropriate STEM strategy. Now, to find out how we can benefit uh, from it, let's talk to Diego Fernandez Garcia, who's the project officer at European Schoolnet, who coordinates the STEM School Label initiative. So, Diego, uh, what is the STEM School Label and what does it even mean? Well, let's see it word by word. Uh, at the beginning, we have STEM, which we already know it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Then we have a school, which means that we are focusing on the whole organization, but not only on individual teachers. And finally, we have a label, which is for us like a medal, let's say, a kind of recognition for those schools who are working on STEM the proper way, no? with quality, and, and they are showing that they can handle STEM education effectively. But of course, it's not only about the recognition, but our, our objective is to provide these schools with some guidance and some tools so they can improve their STEM strategy and involve as well the whole community. So why do schools want this label? What's in it for them and for the teachers? Well, the STEM school label uh, guides a school to assess their own uh, STEM strategy and to identify their areas of, of improvement. So during this process, uh, teachers share their activities and their ideas in the platform and they get inspired as well by the ideas of other teachers from all around the world who are also uploading their ideas in the, in the platform. So basically, when I think of STEM school label, I think of three words, which are guidance, inspiration, and networking for educators. All from the, fr from the point of view of a school, I guess. That's it. So, so how do you get the, t the label? How does a school get the label? Well, the first step, of course, is to go into stemschoollabel.eu and register yourself as an individual teacher and your school. Once you are registered, you will have access to all the content in the platform and all the resources that you will find there. A second step would be to upload the practice evidence that you are doing on your school. So this way you will show the whole community how your school can handle this STEM education. And finally, there's the self-assessment form, which is like the final exam. With it, you can check if you are ready to obtain the label. And if you're not, don't worry, because you will have time to improve. You will receive some feedback as well from us. And you will be able to retake the self-assessment form in a three months. So it's really about schools sharing what they're doing and improving their processes. That's it. And for them also not to feel alone on the way. Thank you That's very it. much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Science in Action. First of all, a quick reminder to fill in the form that you can find in the description. Today, we have a person who has done just that, and we are going to welcome Dr. Christina again. <gasps> Hi, Mr. Scientix man. Hi, Dad. Hi, kids. Hello, Christina. You know, today we have a really nice experiment about leaves because <gasps> autumn is here. Exciting. Yes, so let's go to it. Let's go. First thing that we need to do is to take care of our safety. So safety first, glass kids. And gloves, yeah. And this is the materials that we are going to use. We will need different leaves. Uh, autumn gives you the possibility to have leaves of different colors. A uh, coffee filter that we have cut into strips, isn't it, yes, Dr. Christina? Yes, correct. A small syringe. Yes. We will also need a mortar. It or... is a pestle, Mr. Scientix man. Okay, a pestle. We need also scissors, two jars, okay. which are empty and small in size, and a bottle of acetone. You can find it either online or at your mm -hmm. local supermarket or in nail polish remover. Mm -hmm. First thing that we need to do is to cut the leaves in small pieces. As small as you can, and you put them in the jar. Remember, the more leaves you put in, mm -hmm. the more pigment is going to come out. And now it's time for the acetone. Yes, so we have to make sure to cover the leaves, isn't it? Exactly. We just have to press like that to open Be the... careful, kids. Acetone is flammable. Then we do like that. Exactly. Mm, it's it's OK, Mr. Scientist. Yeah, OK. Yeah. We don't have to waste. Yes. <laughs> and then like that. Yes. And now we grind. So we take the pestle and we need to uh, grind it in circular motions. So we do like that. So this is going to help for the pigment to exactly. actually go out. And 
And then we, we do the same with the other ones. We do the it? same. And now, and now we have to close the jars. Very important, yeah. Yes. And we're going to leave them overnight. Good night, Mr. Scientix Man. Good night, man. Christina. <sighs> so good morning, Dr. Good Christina. Good morning, Mr. Scientix Man. Now we are ready to continue with the experiment. You have to take the small fringe and you have to untap the jar, just like that. And you take the, the liquid, the resulting liquid, and you can see that it's actually green can already. Can you see all the pigments that went in the liquid? Yeah, and you have to put it in the, in the cup of the jar. Yes. We have to wait a little bit for the acetone to evaporate so we get all the pigment in there. So that's perfect. And now we have to do it with the red one yes. as well. With the red one, you will see that the liquid doesn't really look red. It's a bit brown. But let's see if some red is hiding in there. Mm -hmm. So now we just have to let it dry. Yes. So now we have to take the pigment once that is a bit more concentrated because it has dried. And we have to make like a line at the bottom, put in some drops just like that. Perfect. And we have to make sure to cover. And we have to do the same thing with the red one. Do you want to try? Yes, okay, I now. do. It will be nice. Here you have. Amazing. <laughs> Just a little dotted line at the bottom of the filter paper. Now the next step is to take another jar. We have to fill it with acetone just a little bit, like you can see in here in the bottom. So we untap the jar again. Okay. And we have to put like the strip in here, just like that. And this is going to make the color go up. Exactly. This is called chromatography, kids. Exactly, and we can stop when we want, but the thing is to have it like when it is more or less in the, in the upper part. When the really pigment nice. is almost at the top of the filter That's paper. Really really so great. we just have to wait a bit. Yeah, yeah. So now we wait more. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it really with and the proper mixtures and everything. Like that is more or less fine. So we take it out. And let's see the results. So this is the result. We can see that actually the pigment has gone up and has separated from the bottom. So, exactly. Yeah. And what you can see, if you look carefully, is that there are many colors in there. The green leaf also has some yellow pigment. The red leaf, well, we can finally see the red now. So what is happening with chromatography mm -hmm. is that the different pigments travel further or lower down the filter paper. Leaves have multiple pigments in them. So green is chlorophyll, yellow is xanthophyll uh -huh. and red is anthocyanins that's interesting isn't it so that's all for today we hope you have like this experiment and i yeah. love it mr scientix man we will see you again for another sex in action bye bye